that painful, annoying place in my upper back sequence. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you see where that tape is located? Somewhere around there. Maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, but you know it's there. It's so annoying. Well, this sequence is to address that spot. This treatment sequence is a compilation of clips from the following videos. Shoulder physiology, shoulder mobility sequence, shoulder complex sequence, and door frame full body mobility sequence. To begin, we do the tennis ball shoulder massage, which works the upper back muscles and the shoulder blade muscles or the scapular muscles. You can use whatever device or ball that you feel most comfortable to help massage that area. I like the tennis ball because it gives a little bit, but it also has some firmness. You can place the ball just in the middle of your back between your shoulder blade and your spine, or you can place the ball on a particular tender point to try to rub that area out. With the tennis ball in your upper back, you now can move your shoulder back and forth. You can hold your arm externally rotated as sh shown here, or you can put it to your side, allowing the tennis ball to massage the muscles. I recommend at least two minutes of using the tennis ball before moving on. Next, we work on the posterior chain muscles as part of the thoracic mobility and lumbar flattening video. So here's an abbreviation of that. Once we've done the localized massage using the tennis ball, we now can do a generalized mobility of the upper thoracic region. This recognizes the critical role that the thoracic spine plays in shoulder function. I use different tools and I also move my spine as well as rest on these devices. And so you need to figure out what is best for you, what is most comfortable, so that you can maximize thoracic mobility. Like the tennis ball massage, I recommend at least two minutes of thoracic mobility before moving on. When doing these exercises, if it's too uncomfortable for you to raise your arms over your head, then slowly go as far as you can into your zone of discomfort, hold it there for a little bit, then pull back. Through daily exercise, you can shrink the zone of discomfort of your shoulder and increase the zone of comfort. Next, we move to thoracic mobility with a focus on the latissimus dorsi muscle, which is in a very important muscle that attaches to your upper arm and goes all the way down to your hips. The insert shows how to do this same exercise while standing. Because the latissimus dorsi muscle is both a low back hip muscle and a shoulder muscle, that's one of the reasons why the hip and the shoulder are interconnected. Here I'm showing a variety of ways of stretching the latissimus dorsi, both two different ways with using a physio ball as well as now using a foam. Next I'll show several variations of thoracic mobility using a foam roller. Remember, please review my thoracic mobility video to better understand all the variations of foam rolling for the upper spine. Here I move from gliding back and forth to statically arching my back and raising my arms over the head to add more flexibility to my upper back. And finally, I'm just resting here for two or three deep breaths letting the tissues get a good stretch with the assistance of breathing and the foam roller. Now I'm moving into shoulder mobility specific activities. Here I'm demonstrating how to get more external rotation into the shoulders using a simple weight. Ideally, the back of your hand can easily touch the floor without any assistance, as I'm going to demonstrate right here. And sometimes you need a little bit of a stretch with the assistance of a weight in order to achieve it. If you don't have a weight, that's okay. You can simply use a can of crushed tomatoes like I'm using as the assistance. You just need enough weight to help with the external rotation. Now, if you've had a history of shoulder dislocation, I do not recommend this particular component of the shoulder mobility unless you've been cleared by your orthopedic surgeon. Next, we transition into internal rotation of the shoulder. And my elbow is equal to my shoulder height, and I gently press my hand towards the floor. 
Ideal shoulder mobility would have the hand approaching the floor if not touching the floor with minimal discomfort. Here I'm gently pressing on my hand, getting a nice stretch to the shoulder, holding it for about 30 seconds or one to two breaths. Next we're going to work on scapular mobility, trying to get the shoulder blade muscles working efficiently and in a coordinated manner. From this position, you're going to gently raise your hands over your head, palms facing up, attempting to get your hands to touch overhead without your arms lifting off the floor as demonstrated here. If they do lift off the floor, return your arms back to your side, do a little pelvic tilt, trying to keep the lumbar flattening, and raise your arms again. And only go as high as your arms go until they lift off the floor and you can keep a lumbar flattening position. Repeat this movement five or ten times during this sequence. Here I demonstrate the same scapular movement but from a different angle. I focus on trying to keep my hands in the back of my arms on the floor. If my arms rise above my head, I return them back to the position where they were last on the floor. And here I'm doing a little bit of a back and forth movement that does a good job of stretching the tissues so I can get my hands a little bit higher. Now we use some tools for mobility strengthening sequence. Here, simply crossing your arms to stretch out both shoulders. You start off this way. This helps stretch out the upper back as well as the rotator cuff muscles. Now we progress to using a towel. I get a nice long towel. A hand towel could be too short. Maybe you use a small bath towel. One of the amazing things about the shoulder complex is that it can move in many directions at the same time. This is a multi-directional stretch. Work on holding the stretch for up to two minutes on both sides. This can be both a dynamic stretch as well as a static stretch. The goal would be to do both types of stretches for two minutes on both sides. Now this can take you several weeks to get to this point, so be patient. You can also adjust this exercise as shown. Instead of pulling it over your head, use your shoulder if it's putting it over your head is too uncomfortable. So once you get the band secured, you then step far enough away that there's some resistance on the band uh, initially, and now you start doing movement exercises. Here, I'm strengthening up the internal rotators, which are called the subscapularis. Sequence four works on the upper back. Now place your right hand against the door frame as shown. Then take your right heel, lean backwards on it, and give a gentle stretch along the entire back of your arm into your upper back. By placing your hand up and down the door frame, you can change this type of stretch and the direction of the stretch. Take a few steps forward, which increases the stretch along the entire upper back and the arm. Now you can simply add a bounce to each of those movements. Take your right hand and place it along the door frame. Don't put your fingers on it. Put your palm of your right hand against the doorframe. Keep your elbow to your side and gently push your palm into the doorframe for five seconds, then relax for five seconds, then rotate your body 45 degrees and repeat. Gently press for five seconds, relax for five seconds, rotate your body, and then press one more time. 